Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. Uh, well today um, we've got uh, a model uh, review, an inbox review, and uh, we're going to give something a little bit... Uh, it's not new, I've got to be honest, it's been out for a little while, um, but it's a model that I think has now been dropped from production at Ravel. It's the Phantom FGR2, the RAF version of the Phantom. Um, now, thought I'd review this because basically uh, it's become quite rare and I'm not sure you're going to be able to get your hands on one uh, easily. I, I, I almost feel like I'm teasing my viewers a little bit here. I don't do it on purpose. Now, whether it's Wing Nut Wings or now this one, quite hard to get hold of, but you may still pick them up on eBay or one or two model shops may have them. Maybe you can try some of the big suppliers, they may have just the odd, odd item left in stock. Everybody says it's a very nice kit. Now, as I understand it, and we'll get into it in a moment in terms of having a proper look inside, it seems it's probably a very nice kit. It's strange that all the best Revel kits, with the exception of the Tornado, which uh, everybody seems to think is, is the best, really, of its, of its type at 148th, a lot of their best kits, when we say it's the best one we've seen, it does tend to be because somebody else made it for them. So we had the MiG-25 in both 72nd and 48th scale, both made by ICM and both very nice kits indeed. This one is actually a reboxing of a Hasegawa kit. So it's actually uh, not really Revelle's, but we'll have a look at it. This has arrived just a couple of hours ago and I haven't opened it. It's still completely factory sealed, so it's fresh out of the box. So you might have to bear with me while we have a, a good look at it. But I say, it's, a, it's quite an interesting subject. Obviously, it's, um, you can't beat a, a real rip-roaring, good, powerful British Phantom. You know, the, has the Spey Rolls-Royce engines instead of the uh, General, Electric, General Electric turbojets, which the American ones had. Uh, anyway, let's, without further ado, let's crack on and have a, a proper look, and I'll zoom you in a bit so you can see it a bit clear. So, we have here model number 490462. And it's saying here, I think this actually came out in, just check, because it will tell us, I'm sure. Two, oh, it came out in 2019 in this form. So that's interesting that they've dropped it, only run it for a, a year. But, um, right, okay, so um, in its current markings, they call it British Legends. So uh, 1918 to 2018. So I think it's really the Royal Air Force sort of celebration of 100 years. Right, so let's have a look at the back. We got here some some nice photos, and I think I commented on the tornado recently about how Ravel used to show these photos of their models built that were pretty off. I mean, they were really badly painted, badly built, didn't really sell it to you at all. And they seem to have learned because uh, in the last year or two, they seem to have now got models who can actually build these things properly and do a little bit of weathering and some nice finishing. Got the decals right; they look really presentable. So it looks great. I've got to be honest. So. Without further ado, I'll just zoom you back out and we can uh, get cracking. Just a knife out, break the seal for the first time. There we go. Let's see what we've got. Well, of course, we've got this uh, we always, same old thing, isn't it? This end opening box, which nobody seems to like. I hate them. I think they're not durable. The box is all bow and they're just not strong and they don't protect the model very well. Let's hope it's okay. Here we go. Okay, that's it. We'll just pop the box down there for a minute or two. We'll bring you back later for a final appearance at the end. I'll tell you what, why don't we put him there? It's not really in the way, is he? I don't think there. Right, now then. Now I have a confession to make. In my last video, which was the uh, Armament set from Edward, the big sin set for the uh, weapons. I, uh, I did have some issues with the focus on my camera, and if people were watching that, I think oh, it, it could seem as the, the box in the background while I was trying to get the things in focus, and we had some issues, so I do apologise. I'm going to try better today. I'm going to zoom it in a bit more, but I'm going to zoom it in in such a way that it's not too closely cropped and you can see what's going on. So, we've got one big bag, which I never really like, I've got to be honest. Instructions. So, Tell you what we'll do, we'll pop the bag on one side for a second and we'll get into the instructions and I'll zoom you in so you can see fairly well what we got. So, very nice looking kit, it's got some pre shading, it's this, as I mentioned, like Revel's model makers have made a bit of an effort here. Looks very nice, I must say. And we've got decals and we've got the release protective tissue 
on the right side, which is also good, which is unlike the tornado of the week. And then we've got the decals. We'll look at the decals first, eh? So, here you come. Now then, we've got some quite chunky um, uh, transfer film there, the actual uh, backing film. Uh, it's not, it's a bit old school, isn't it? The way they've done it around the entire block of letters, there's no, there's no picking out in between. You might have to cut that out if you don't want to get silvering issues, but um, that's kind of the way that Revel and Airfix always used to do it, if we're honest. Apart from that, I think it looks pretty nice. Um, nice colours, seems to be in good registration. Can't see any issues with, uh, with the printing quality. Looks pretty nice. Yeah. A bit closer for you, there you go. Stencils. There are a lot of stencils. A lot. This could take some time. Yeah, it's, it's a bit like Captain uh, Captain Oates in Scott of the Antarctic, isn't it? You say to your wife, I'm, I'm going to do some stenciling. I may be gone some time. Never to be seen again, yeah? Because it's going to take a while. But those look really nice, actually. Um, just a little bit of a shame about the, the carrier film. Um, it's a little bit... It's a little bit extreme in places, isn't it? There you go. You're right in close there. See what I mean? Yeah, you're going to really need to trim around that, otherwise it's going to look a bit, a bit ugly. Um, and there is, yeah, I wouldn't say it's excessive on anything else. I think, it, I think they're pretty nice. And there's some lovely graphics there. Look at these uh, snakes, cobras. I think they are. Not sure which squadron that is. Is it the 56 or 92? Anyway. Uh, yeah, the carry film's a bit hideous, but apart from that, they look really nice. So that's good. By the way, the kit I picked up the kit for £26, I think it was. I think that's the going price. Uh, I didn't get any super discounts on this one like I did on the Tornado. All right. Typical Revel instructions. Yeah, they do this thing where they um, feel the need to translate every... You know, call out into every single language that they think of on the planet which I think is a bit OTT but anyway uh, we've got the uh, sprue map which is I quite like this I think that one or two manufacturers who don't do it including Tamiar I think that's a mistake actually one of Tamiar's few shortcomings I have to say but it's very useful to have a visual representation and the areas showing parts you're not going to use being blanked out like they've done here so that looks pretty good it's all nice and clear. These instructions for Revel these days are really pretty smart. I mean, they used to be the worst of all. Now, they're probably up there with the top three or four manufacturers for instructions. So, let's have a look then. If we start off with the ejector seats, and we've got a couple of pilots, what well, pilot, co pilot, stroke, weapons officer, navigator. And uh, we've got building up the tub for the cockpit here, instrumentation, sides of the cockpit wall and then slotting it into one side and then bringing in the pilots and the other side of the cockpit here. Then you've got your intakes which um, I've got a funny feeling I've read or heard somewhere that this can be a bit challenging on this kit. Yeah, not sure what it is about Revel but they always seem to have an issue with intakes but we shall see. A few holes to be drilled and then putting in your uh, flaps landing flaps on the wings and the tail cone for the spay engines here and then we got uh, the top of the tail which has got I don't know it's got the countermeasures and all that sort of stuff in there then and this worries me a little bit I've got to say then we've got a nose with two in two halves which I absolutely hate I don't know about you but no, that's not the way to go. All the manufacturers these days do it as a single slide moulded piece. You don't end up with all these awful seams on the most obvious part of the model. So, yeah, that's a little bit old school. But anyway, then you bring the, um, you've got the curving at the back of the cockpit and you bring your fuselage down onto the wings and you've got some little vents at the back over the spay engines 
and your tail and your parachute cap on the back. Uh, front undercarriage followed by the doors and all the fixtures and fittings and hydraulics and then the main undercarriage we have here with its legs, doors, earlier legs and they go in plus the the back main door which you can see here and we've got the little, because there's several little doors aren't there on the Phantom, one, two, three, yeah there's a few doors aren't there, there's one, two, three is that a flap? No that's not the doors is it? It's not the doors as I thought it was at first glance. You have to bear with me, I've never seen this model before, I'm not, not familiar with it. But here, that's like flaps isn't it? I presume it's um, underwing flaps. Interesting. I can't recall seeing that before, I'm not sure if that's uh, just on the British Phantom, but I'm sure the Phantom experts who are watching this will share it out and send me a message. <laughs> then we've got the, um, the baffles at the, uh, on the uh, intakes. Quite famous on the British aircraft. They're a little bit bigger, aren't they? For the Spey engines, the the Spey engine was a little bit fatter but shorter. It needed bigger intakes and it did create a bit more drag, apparently. Then we've got your clear parts coming in here for the cockpit, uh, the front lid screen, anyway, and then the middle uh, section between the two main canopies. And we then progress to the two main ones themselves. You've got a lot, quite a, bit, a few bits of glass here to, to manage. And then we're on to the stores. So we've got a centre line fuel tank. Or we have some sort of an ECM pod. It doesn't actually give it a name. So experts again will probably know what this one is. But there's definitely some sort of an ECM pod. Then we've got a couple of fuel tanks. And then we've got the Vulcan Gatling gun. Which I'm sure that lots of people recognise there on the left. Quite a wicked... Uh, unit we bought from the Americans and then we've got some rails and pylons and here we are into fitting those into the wing placing your, your drop tanks on the wing as well and then you've got some Sparrow missiles, F4 Sparrow missiles uh, it's actually, actually Skyflash I'm forgetting, of course, the Sparrow was earlier and we got the Sky Flash by the time we got to this uh, 1992. So we've got some uh, more advanced air to air missiles indeed. And um, this aircraft shows the scheme here. This is the 92 Squadron, sorry, 56 Squadron in 1992. That's where I got 92 from. Uh, RAF Wattisham. RAF Wattisham these days, of course, is the home of the uh, Apache helicopters that the RAF run. Anyway, um, got you. Various, look at the stencil, this is absolutely terrifying. If you're anything like me, you're not a fan of stencils, you know. You're going to find this a little bit frightening. Look at them. They are a lot. 164, 171. There's nearly 180 stencils. That's a lot of stencils. Oh, and that's just, is that just on the top? That's just on the top. 44, 40, I'm just wondering if they've doubled up the numbers here. Now, yeah, it's about 100, and, I think there's 174 in total. In total, but that is just mind blowing. So, here we go, Watership again, 56 Squadron. See the other side of the aircraft, and then the under, underneath, complete with its Sky Flash missiles, and then the Vulcan cannon. And then they've got the Wildenrath aircraft from uh, 92 Squadron. This is in blue, which is quite attractive. Almost looks like a show plane for air shows, doesn't it? So there's an interesting scheme there, and then the other side, and underneath, and then we've got the Larbrook, here we go, this is the, the sort of uh, 1974, more my era, <laughs> what sort of colours I used to see the Phantoms in, and we got a uh, Larbrook full uh, camo scheme on the top. And uh, it says AIM-7 Sky Flash. I'm not sure it was Sky Flash in 74. I think that was a Sparrow then. I think that's a slight error than me. Anyway. And then we've got the other side of it. And you can see there we've got the good old... Uh, I think it's light sea grey, isn't it? The underneath for the, uh, the 1970s type retro scheme. 
and it's an EMI pod. EMI pod, it's an electronic countermeasures pod of some description. I think the idea is that it's supposed to, um, I think it's primarily for scrambling everybody's radar and uh, interfering with the uh, incoming uh, signals from other aircraft, etc. Anyway, let's get into the actual opening of the, the kit. So we'll have a proper look at this. I've never seen this before. I've never seen the Hasegawa version either, so it's completely new to me. So those of you that are familiar with it, please bear with me. Uh, I'm not that keen on the one big bag, I never am. But anyway, we shall see what we got. So, we're very gentle. Uh, clear parts. Well, I can tell you there are no loose parts, so that's, that's a good start. Um, mm, bit of a twisted sprue frame. A little bit worrying. No, let's do one at a time. Let's keep it simple. Well, gently put these over there. Oh, they're definitely trying to get off the sprue there. They're trying. Very, very gentle with that. Right, ah, okay. So, what do we got? So, I'm guessing this is the, say, the Hasegawa. I don't know if there's any markings to identify it as such. It doesn't seem to be. I get the feeling it's been rubbed off of the off and R when they rebox something. But uh, let's bring you in for a closer look so you can see what you think. Main fuse large. So, it's, um, it's quite a hard plastic, a bit old school, the plastic. And it's quite a sort of a shiny sort of finish to it, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I'm sure there should have been a bit of sprue in the middle there. It seems to have vanished, but anyway. I'm sure it was just connector piece. I don't think we've lost anything. It, uh, it looks all right. Feels good. Feels nice and solid and quite strong. Quite hard plastic, as I say. Feels fairly sturdy. Yeah, plenty of detail. It's not quite... Yeah, it's not very deep. It's quite shallow, the detail, I'd say. We shall see how the others are like. Next sprue, this is the one that's got all these seats and cockpit parts and intakes on it. Sorry, mustn't make this mistake I made yesterday. I mean, I had problems with the focus. Let's just try and give my reluctant camera every chance to get it right. There we go. This is a bit easier when I do it like this, I think. Okay. Now yeah, then, we've got here the outer uh, intakes and then the, the inner intakes. Got the baffle, those are quite nice. Nice detail on the baffling here. Bring you in so you can see this a bit better. That's quite nice, isn't it? That's pretty decent, it looks very fine. A little bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of mole marks here sort of within the plastic. I think it'll be okay. It feels smooth enough. So it should be okay when it's uh, sprayed up. And then we've got, turn it over, it's a bit more detail this side. And then we've got tub. Again, de the detail's quite shallow. It's sharp, but it's shallow. More so than compared to some of the modern kits, I think. But it looks okay. And uh, there's no flash really on these parts. Not not that I can detect that's any problem. Ejector seats look quite nice. You've got to bear in mind it's a £26 kit, you know. <laughs> it's not a lot of money. I think those parts look really nice. Let's see, we've got the uh, undercarriage legs, back of the uh, back of the cockpit, coving. Then we've got, oh, okay, there's a bit of flash on these parts with the hands, etc., for the pilots. Yeah, that's a little bit flashy, but um, it's the first flash I've seen. I, I do hate flash, I've got to say, it's a real bugbear of mine. Then we've got the front nose leg, and the pilot and the navigator. They're quite nicely moulded, actually. They're, they're not particularly flashy. They're all right. Um, and then the heads with their oxygen lines attached, which makes them look a bit like something from Alien, but... Anyway, no, I think that's quite nice. Uh, you've got the uh, ejector hood pulls here. Those look good. I think it looks all 
right, you know this. For the money, yeah, so far, not bad at all. Just wondering if I can find a home somewhere to put the other parts. Just, um... Right, next one. This is where they get a bit, a bit weak in terms of the actual uh, sprue frame. I mean, a little bit missing. So here we've got the Vulcan cannon, Gatling gun. And again, it's very shiny plastic, but it's quite hard, quite nicely detailed. A little bit of flash here at the back. If you can make that out, yep, see it there? A bit flashy. Uh, can't see it's flashy on the other parts, just get the odd part with flash on. And we've got uh, what looks like kind of slide moulded, I think. The uh, exits of the engines there the flame rings and all that stuff. It's quite well recessed. So I'm just going to put a little bit more light on to help us here. Let's see if we can have a little bit more detail. Bear with me. I think you might see it a bit better now. There we go, a little bit more light to help us. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Anyway, then we've got the tail planes. Which, uh, yeah, they're quite stiff. The parts feel quite quite well formed and quite solid. And we've got a little bit of the uh, afterburner cones there. And this EMI pod. No relation to the music company, I'm sure. Okay. Now we're getting into the stores. I'll have to bring you back it's quite a big sprue, this one. There we go. So we've got um, drop tanks for the wings, centerline tank, and we've got another, it looks like it's an alternative version of the tail cone, interestingly. So we've got two different versions there, I'm not quite sure if they are both employed. I have a feeling that this is the FGR2 one, here. Just check that on the, it's on the back. Uh, oh, that's quite baffling actually. Which one is it? Seem to have two options. And I think that's no. No, I think that this sprue is a generic sprue. And I think that's for the uh, F4J. Or the American, one of the American versions, that looks like it's the. Uh, uh, that to me looks like it's the alternative engine, American engine. I'm sure of it, that's the American one, so we ignore that. I think it's just that, that everything else is the same, the missiles. And it says, you know, Sky Flash missiles, but they awfully look like sparrows to me. So again, that might be a little bit of cheating that's gone on here. But it looks okay. Just make sure you put the right, the right muscles in. Uh, I'm sure if we just go back to the instructions, it will tell me. We'll do that. I'm sure it will tell me that that's blanked out. Let's just have a look. Do, do, do. Yes, sure enough. Sure enough. It blanks out these two, so you ignore those two. They're not not the correct ones for the FGR2. It's the American version. Okay, so that's fine. So obviously it's just a generic sprue. But anyway, um. In terms of the performance of the actual sprue itself, the, uh, the parts look nice and clean and they, there's no flash really that's going to be any problem there. They're nice and clean points on the sparrows you can see there. Looks really nice. Looks fine. No problem there. I'm oh, quite impressed so far, if I'm honest. It seems to be getting better and better for the money. <laughs> and then we've got a couple of tiny sprues here. We have got the nose, which comes on its own little sprue whatever reason. There we go, it's in two halves. Yeah, which I don't like, and there's no locating pins on the back. I don't like that. That is very much a throwback to a previous way of doing things. You've got to get your alignment absolutely bob on. Um, that said, perhaps having no pins does stop any... Some of these kits, you know, the cheaper kits, they have a pin and it's not well located, it's not the right shape, etc. It's probably easier to get it right without a pin, so maybe you'll be okay. Maybe you'll be okay. 
And then we have a one final big sprue. I'm going to be careful with this one because it's got the wings on it. And the wings are becoming detached, so I'm going to hold it like this. <laughs> it's just about to leave the sprue at any moment here. It's like it's shaking skeleton. <laughs> but let's have a look at the parts. So this is the underside and uh, again the detail is it's shallow. It's, it's a little bit underplayed I'd say. Um, which is not, doesn't look wrong in itself. The problem is when you come to do a wash, if you put a primer coat and then you know paint it and then put a wash on it, by the time you get to the wash when it's very fine like this, it's often filled in and this can be problems, this is a problem with the older kits. Uh, the actual uh, panel lines look fine within themselves. There's a couple of uh, mould marks here, I don't know if I'll pick up on the camera, you see that? Let's get you a bit more zoom. Can you see that mould mold mark here, just, just above my thumb it is. A little bit nasty isn't it? <laughs> Hopefully that will, uh, well there's the other shell and it's uh, painted hopefully. But yeah, they're just a bit too, maybe too too fine, a bit too subtle, some of this uh, panel marking. I think that there might be issues with the uh, infill when you come to paint it. By the time you get to the wash, I think it's going to be uh, almost gone. So my advice would be, unless you want to rescribe everything, which I wouldn't bother myself, but be very, very light with your paint coats on this one, because otherwise you're going to have a, a struggle. Look at this, I can't. I think it's best to do it as I started that way up. So we've got our wings. I mean, they are nice. It's a little bit... They've got riveting detail underneath, or pan line detail. It's, again, it's just a bit light compared to what you'd expect today. If you look at Azokimura, they are different. You'd notice that they have got a lot more detail, it's a lot more defined. I think that's the right word, it's not that well defined, it's a bit light. Um, there's some nasty ejection, <laughs> nasty ejection pin marks here. If we just go down to here, some quite nasty ones there actually. You'll have to take care of those. Um, but again, we're talking about a kit at £26 here, we're not talking about a Tamiya at 100 quid, or, you know, all right, not 100 quid, but sort of 70, 80 quid, you know, you're going to get yourself something like a Tomcat these days, they're up with a £70, and that's the same scale, so we're talking about something that's a third the price, basically, and it's all relative, isn't it? Uh, a bit disappointed about the way it's been done on the sprue. The sprue is definitely too weak and you know it's broken off here. Yeah, because they're using the old Hasegawa um, mould. That's uh, that's come out a little bit shunky to be honest. Anyway, um, I don't think we need to um, go into too much detail. Uh, same saying here, very shunky aren't they? <laughs> It's sprue, it's very weak, you can put it there so it doesn't break. Let's have a look at the clear parts. See what they're like. I'm, I'm kind of, um, I like it. I think for the money I think it's very good, I've got to be honest. But there are some issues here. You don't, you don't want to go heavy with your paint coating at all because you're in trouble. I think that so little uh, impression on that detail, you need to be very, very careful. Grease proof paper, what's that for? That's very strange, isn't it? I've not seen that before. Is that normal for Hasegawa, folks? Don't know why that's there. Anyway, the clear parts, let's have a proper look. A little bit more light here. Do you know what? They're quite nice, they look very thin as well. A uh, little bit of distortion here. Let's bring you in, see if you can see it yourself. The front windscreen is beautiful. A little bit of distortion here. A bit of scuff and a bit of distortion at the front. But it's very thin and very scale like actually, so it's not it's not bad news. I quite like the appearance of it actually. 
and there's no centre seam, there is a little bit of distortion. But the, 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 the biggest impression I get from looking at this in my hand is it, it's thin and it looks scale-like. Some of these canopies, you know, look at them in there, look a bit chunky. That doesn't, that looks really thin. And when you've got that painted up, I think that will look really nice. I think it will. Yeah, I'm impressed with that actually. That, that's probably the most impressive sprue of the lot. One or two little scuffs, I think that's mainly packaging. A little bit of distortion here and there, but overall, I think when it's in situ and it's had a little polish, that will look beautiful. That is quite impressive. So, um, it's not overly complicated, I don't think, as a kit. I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, old school, you know. <laughs> I don't think it's going to technically challenge you all that much because there's not that much to go at. You know, there's. Uh, I said about the flaps, it's not the flaps, is it? It's the other ones, in fact. They haven't got any flaps, they've got the underneath flaps, under the underside, under the wing. Um, we're talking here about a kit that's been, that's been you know, borrowed from Hasegawa. Uh, it's not a new generation kit, um, but it, it's actually... I've heard that people have built them and actually really like this kit, so it's actually not a difficult one to build. Just watch out for your intakes, watch out for this rather thin... Uh, or rather shallow, undefined panel lining, as I've already mentioned. But anyway, I think for £26, I think that's really quite a good value for money. And it really, the plastic is nice. I can't, even though it's not the most sophisticated looking mould and all the rest of it, you know, it, it looks like an FGR2 Phantom to me. And I think I'd quite enjoy building that. I think once you, uh, once you get into it, I think you'd really enjoy it. I think it's... Uh, it's going to look like a real beast, and you know, you look at the pictures on the on the box. It looks absolutely fine. I think it's great. So I won't, um, won't uh, go over old ground. I think um, I'd I, I fancy it in the retro camo outfit. You know, I think that's the way I'd have it. The lab look. That looks pretty kicking to me. I think I'd have it in that, and I'd put all the, the cannon on it. Yeah, it's pretty it hasn't got some perhaps some Matra rocket launchers or something or some bombs, that would be nice. But you can always get some aftermarket ones, it wouldn't really be a problem, would it? So, in summary, I think for £26, so it's the same price as the Tornado. This is where we have a little bit of a problem, isn't it? The Tornado at £26, which that's a bargain. I mean this is not quite such a bargain because you're getting something that's a bit older, not quite there's not as much detail, there's not as much finesse. But I think you have to put it in perspective. I think the Tornado is exceptional value at £26 and frankly you'd pay 35 for that and wouldn't complain really. This is probably the right price I think. 20, 23, 26 quid, that sort of region. 20, let's say £25-ish. It's about right really. And it's it's quite a nice kit. People say that you know it goes together quite well. So yes, I think I'd give it... I'd say maybe 7.5 out of 10 but I think I'd recommend it. So it's thumbs up from me. And um, if you do want one, you might have to shop around, but you, the prices may actually go up. So the prices I've quoted you might not be right anymore because there is a bit of a, a lack of supply now and uh, I'm not sure they're going to run it again, Revel. Not sure what Revel's situation is now. Well, we know they've had a lot of problems. We won't go into old ground on that, but um, hopefully they're coming out of it. But uh, as I say, whether you get this one or the Hasegawa one, I think the Hasegawa one is a bit more money, it's about £34, something like that, if you can get that one. But certainly, yeah, at this price point I think it's it's fine. So, I would recommend you have a look into it. If you fancy a nice beefy British Phantom, this is the one to probably get for the money. Um, nobody else has brought one out since, uh, you know, we haven't had anything from uh, Zokimura. Everybody's expecting and hoping that one day they're going to do a British Phantom. I think it's probably, it would make a lot of sense for them to do that because even if they did a short run of them for six months, you know, I think they'd sell them, no problem. Um, it would have helped if they'd had Telford on this year for a project like that, but there's always next year, so maybe it's something they might consider, who knows. Anyway, in for me. Thank you for joining me. I hope you found it interesting. Quite a nice kit, you know, for the money. Nice instructions, got great decals. 
Um, yeah, I think it's something I, uh, I might build in the future if I can find the room. But it's certainly there's certainly nothing here to scare you off or make you think. Oh, in fact, one of the impressions I got actually as I flipped through it was this wouldn't take long to build. I think there's quite a quick build and you'd get quite a nice result. Uh, just go easy with your painting. Keep it light. You know, thin coats. In fact, I'm not even sure I prime it actually. Um, I think you want to try and keep the the layers down to a minimum. Um, but yeah, I think it's one you should consider. So there we go. Thanks for joining me. Nice to see you again. Thanks to all my subscribers. And uh, if you enjoyed the video and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Give me a like. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell because then you'll get notifications when there's a new video coming up. Uh, we are expecting some new kits coming through in the not too distant future. There's still talk about a couple from Airfix and one or two others that are of interest coming in between now and Christmas. So please keep your eyes peeled for that. If I can get one quickly I will and we'll do another review and we'll see you back here very very soon. So thanks very much. In the meantime I think we're going into a bit of a lockdown situation in terms of the Covid crisis and we don't want to talk about that but there's a good opportunity for us all to do a bit more modelling. So uh, yeah happy modelling. Enjoy uh, the time that you have if you have some extra spare time. Uh, take your mind off the troubles of the world, get yourself into some modelling, get the paint out, get the glue out, just don't try and try not to smell it in and inhale it too much, otherwise you might go a bit around the bend. Anyway, in the meantime, thanks a lot and hope to see you again very, very soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.